Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, iPod King Carter here. Um, today, we're going to be talking about NBA 2K25 and uh, all the things that we know up until now. Um, it's been a crazy two days. Uh, a lot of people have been finding out new information, especially through the wee hours of the night. Since Mike Wayne decided to take to um, Discord and to Twitter to answer a few questions about what's to come. But before we get into that, I want to tell you guys about two new features that they're they're saying is brand new that people won't use um okay i'm just gonna let the cat out the bag i do not believe that people will really use rhythm shooting like that and the second feature that was um announced was the new uh shot feedback with the new meter um i believe in all honesty if you are Somewhat of a better player. I, don't, I won't call you comp. Um, you can still be a casual and still be a, a comp casual or, you know, a better casual than somebody who plays the game maybe an hour a week. Um, if you are this person, 2K has already told you for the last few years, if you don't use the meter, you receive a small bonus to win to your green window. And if you have the ability to make that shot within that green window. Now, of course, if you know, very late and all that and late, you're not going to hit those because we played on green or die. But with the new, you know, high risk reward, the low risk reward, um, the difficulty and everything like that, all of these new shot time and profiles doesn't change the fact that people are going to still not use the meter. Now, I won't get into the whole Zen world and all of that. Who cares about that? We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about general, just regular people that play 2K and the just knowing that there's a boost to not using the meter. It's not going to be used. And come on, let's talk about rhythm shooting for a moment. If you don't know what rhythm shooting is, it's basically the ability to just only use the right stick for shooting to find the rhythm of the actual person's jump shot you're using. What I mean by that is... If you are standing still in a corner, you, you're a corner sitter and you catch the ball, you can flick and hold down on a right stick. And when the shot form is going, once that player or whomever jump shot you're using for your my player gets to its set point to release the ball, you flick up on a right stick and it just lets it go. I don't think a lot of people are wanting to use that just simply because it's too much input memory for it. It's just too much. Nobody is going to want to do that. I, and, and the crazy thing is, if you use the shot meter and you use rhythm dribble, Mike Wayne from 2K is also saying that you'll be able to follow the shot meter because it breaks through all the latency barriers, which means if you're playing online, if you're playing on a TV, if you're playing on a monitor, it won't matter because the shot meter is supposed to be one to one with the release of your jump shot. Now, of course, in a perfect world, that sounds great, but in all honesty, it's too much sensory overload for the basketball game. And what I mean by that is we are players that have been playing the game for a few years now, and we completely understand that with all the new additions that they're trying out to make other players better, the general pool of players that have been playing 2K for a very long time could care less about the sensory overload because yeah, we might care about our shot time and feedback if we missed a shot and we just want to have that small adjustment, but we don't want a hundred different things popping up on screen, just throwing us for a loop. Now, of course, the green animation, something that 2K was able to move away from your player and move to the top of the basket was a great addition last year. It was, it was amazing because it helped me with that sensory overload. It, it allowed me to focus in more on my cue and be able to hit shots anytime somebody passed me the ball or if I wasn't fatigued trying to do a moving shot and things of that nature. So from what I understand, Mike Wang and 2K, the dev team, everybody, they want to try to make people better. And they're trying to give them the tools to do that. But at the same time, all of us 2K players that are already kind of good at the game or mediocre at the game will not be using it. And I also want to know, what are your thoughts in the comment section? Do you think that you'll be using the shot meter? Do you think that you'll be using rhythm shooting? Or do you even think that you'll try it out for 28 to 48 hours when the game dropped to see if you can even get used to it? 
Or do you think that you're going to just go in and, and do what you already know with 2K, turn everything off and set your jump shot, uh, set point, push, release and all of that and just, you know, hop online or hop into my career or hop into my team? Or will you actually try out some of the new features that 2K is saying that they're bringing to the game? Let me know inside the comment section. Now, there is a lot more information that um, you need to know about 2K if you haven't found out. Um, 2K has been pushing their Discord a lot recently, like, I mean, to the max. And I've even been noticing, even with Mike Wayne bringing his return back to Twitter, he's only answered a few tweets, but he's answered a ton of messages from the NBA 2K's Discord. Now, if I'm being honest with you, I do believe that it allows 2K to, you know, wash through all the riffraff and the spam accounts and the hate and the bots and all of that just to get to the core audience from 2K. Because when you have to join our Discord, you got to verify all, all this information. You got to make sure your account is, you know, in tip top shape. It can't be a spam account. If they get a notification within the Discord that, you know, your unauthorized, your spam, your, you know, a possible bot account, possible fraudulent account, you know, 2K can easily just kick you out of their Discord. So they have people that have been in their Discord for quite a while now. But let's talk about some things. Um, There was a lot of information verbally and, you know, written down that, you know, Mike Wayne talked about um, not only in the, uh, the interview that he did with Stax and Evan yesterday, but also in the 2K TV interview that he did, as well as the Courtside Report, which is basically every nerd's dream is to read about what's coming. Now, from what I saw, I saw a lot of hot keywords that, you know, may get some people amped up and hype about the game, but I also seen that those same, you know, hit keywords also are just to, you know, get people who may be confused or may not know what's going on interested because of those keywords. And, you know, you know, it's a, it's a marketing game. You have to say hot, you know, three syllable words to get people like, Oh, what's that? That's a new fee. Oh, that's, that sound fire. I might have to try that out. So within that, after, you know, all of that stuff came out yesterday, um, after the stream that I did, I wanted to make a, a short, concise video on everything that Mike Wayne talked about. So let's go ahead and um, just go down what he uh, talked about. Um, first question was, are instant green animations back? Now, the crazy thing is, right? The reason why instant green animations were taken out of the game is because of R1L1. And R1L1 was a feature that was used back in 2K23 so that, you know, whenever a rebound will come, the center or the power forward or the small forward, whoever grabbed the rebound would just be able to have to hit R1L1 and a ball will fly down the court no matter what. So that means as soon as the shot go up, you could just hit R1L1 and the person will run. Now in 2K23, instant green was there and as soon as you put the shot up if the green animation didn't pop up instantly the guards take off and what that did was that made players easily score three points easily get a highlight dunk or a highlight layup on a fast break and it made the game unbalanced because basically it was no longer a game of runs it was who can get down the court the fastest off of a a, a, a botched three-point shot or whatever the case may be and how fast can your center hit r1l1 in nba 2k24 they not only delayed the green um, release animations and the animation your player would actually make when he made his shot, but also they took R1L1 out. So basically it had to be a little bit more competitive and a little bit more verbal, um, you know, call outs between teammates, whether you're the point guard shooting car, calling for the ball. Some people say XXXX, circle, 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 BBB, AAA, XXX, you know what I mean? So like they were calling out their icons on who was the furthest down court so that the center would know who to throw it to off the rebounds. So let's talk about it for a moment. Um, there's a new shot feedback option called Simple in the customized HUD menu um, that is on by default. This will display your time and feedback immediately once you release your shot. If you want full shot feedback, which includes defensive coverage, which you know we had in the bottom left of the um, scoreboard uh, last year for 2K24, uh, you want to change your visibility setting to all shots. Full shot feedback is delayed just like it was in 2K24. So as soon as you put the shot up, you're not gonna see all the contest, you're not gonna see all that. It's gonna take time for the shot to go up. Green, 36% contested. Well, well let's, let's hope 
to God that 36% contested greens don't go in a lot. But that's just, you know, for 2K25, you know. Um, now, um, second question, how are free throws this year? Have they changed? Now, if you play 2K24, um, you already know what it is. But if you didn't play 2K24, because I know that there's a lot of people out there that not only didn't have time to play the game, some people boycotted the game and also wanted to just take a year off. Um, free throws have been retuned based on feedback from NBA 2K24. They work similarly to last year, but the free throw rating plays a bigger role in calculation to prevent low rated free throw players from being overly effective. What that means is I've seen people hit 40%, 50%, 60%, hit two seventy percent free throw ratings. And I've seen people miss with 90. So in, in all in all, when you did go to the line and you had to go to that strike and shoot, most of the time people were making their free throws. You know what I mean? I've even seen people hit with 22%, you know what I mean? With their free throws. And I'm talking about low, low end so if you were somebody who made a park build and didn't put any free throw on your build and you came to the wreck you had somewhat success um especially it's and it's funny because a lot of people will say well dang they making every single shot but at the same time those people who got to the line also didn't have whistle so for those people who had whistle and had a high um free throw rating they was green and them things back to back you didn't miss unless there was like some type of latency issue and that came from not dribbling your first dribble in the routine of your uh free throw so like as soon as you go through the free throw you you weren't supposed to spam through your animation and then just be holding the ball and ready to shoot go through your animation let it all play out because sometimes there was like input lag and stuff now uh let's go now to the next one um the question was, is the court slash player model ratio different? Now, this was something big that popped up on social media yesterday because um, a few content creators were putting out, uh, you know, tweets and stuff like that, talking about the, the way that the courts look. Some people were saying that the courts were zoomed out. Some people were saying that the, the player models got smaller, the courts got bigger. So in that answer, uh, Mike said, we adjusted the player to court ratio in 2K25. Um, to give players more room to operate. It's improved the flow of the game and allows certain cuts that will often get jammed up before. Now, if I'm being honest, with the way that the courts were in 2K24, cuts, they still got through a lot, but room to operate was really, really small. You really had to be an elite back to the basket or jab step face up player to get those one-on-one -on -one matchups off because Honestly, a player could just slide two steps and be in your driving lane or, you know, cut you off and stuff like that. Or, you know what I mean? You know, get a little bump still or something like that. And I, I pray to God bump stills are going, but we'll talk about that in a later video. Um, he also said that um, the AI spacing engine also got a huge upgrade compared to just a few st static locations last year. There are now over 20 dynamic adjustment locations, constantly feeding the AI a stream of spacing information. This helps the AI properly space to give you more room to isolate or work the two man game, i.e. all of you, you know, picking rollers, picking poppers. You know what I mean? You know, um, it also helps them understand more advanced spacing concepts when deciding to help double and rotate on defense. So I'm guessing with that being said, I think that the Rex AIs will be making a comeback this year, but they might be a little bit smarter on the offensive end instead of always getting in your way and picking your spot when you know that you want to be at the hash, but the AI just be standing there like, Hey buddy, we're, we're hash brothers. So, you know, stuff like that. Now, next thing. Um, how are shot meters changed in 2K25? Um, we got a glimpse of one in the trailer. It looked a bit more transparent than previous 2Ks. Now, this is what I was talking about in the beginning of this video. A lot of people do have questions about the meter because there are a lot of people out there that use a meter for certain situations. Now, if I'm being honest, I'll probably be using a meter for layups only but I won't be probably using it for dunks that much or, you know what I mean, jump shots that much, unless I want to kill something at the rim, but I know I'm never going to use it for jump shots or, or free throws. Um, but the answer to that was the shot meter works pretty differently in 2K25 compared to previous games. There are three options to choose from, arrow, ring, and dial. Rather than freezing when you release the shot button, all of the meter, meters animate from the beginning to end in sync with the ideal time to release the button. 
The ideal time release the button is exact frame. The meter disappears from your screen. It'll make more sense when you try it. One of the main benefits of this change is that the shot meters are much more accurate online. So you no longer need to compensate for latency when you're shooting shots, layups or free throws online. That's what I was talking about in the beginning of this video. The size, color and placement of the shot meter is fully customizable in a customizer HUD screen. And yes, there is still a small bonus for playing with the meter off again. Like I said in the beginning of the video, huge new feature that, you know, as far as, you know, I guess that hmm, visual cue type of vibe for the meter coming in, but playing with the meter off still gives you the bonus. So why use it? Now, of course, I'm not trying to stray you guys into not using the meter. All I'm saying is if you're somebody that can get a good jump shot that you like and figure out that timing, take that meter off because after that you get a bonus to it too. So, you know, use the meter for like two, three days, get your jump shot down. Once you get all of your shots, you know, and that feel for it in there, take that meter off, get the bonus. Um, next thing, um, any changes to layup slash dunk timing this year? Layup timing is optional and disabled by default, but I recommend turning it on if you want to gain an advantage as a slasher. Just like shots, there are separate layup timing profile options, real player percentage, low, normal, and high. So you can customize the setting to match your ability. Dunk timing is always on for skill dunks, but you can still dunk without using that particular mechanic. The dunk meter logic has also been improved. So instead of the window size being determined just at the start of the dunk, it dynamically adjusts throughout the entire dunk sequence to better reflect defensive impact. Now, that's something huge, but that's also something to be seen because if there's someone who has a 99 driving dunk, a 78 strength, uh, maybe a, a 88 vertical and they're going up against somebody with a let's say 88 interior defense and the 88 block and maybe 78 strength how will that meter look opposed to that matchup or that same dunker going up against somebody with a 98 interior a 93 block <laughs> you know what i'm saying a 89 strength like I want to see how that dynamically changes. I know I won't be making a bill to test those things out, but I know that a few other YouTubers here will be making those, you know, pure dunking builds. I probably would want to see how D-Man fares in this and how he, you know, makes his slasher. All right, next question. How does shot feedback work for rhythm shooting? Now, remember, this is the thing that I talked about in the beginning of the video. Brand new feature, something coming to the game for the first time. But let's talk about it. Um, when using rhythm shooting, there are two main factors to consider. Push timing and tempo. Push timing is the point you start to move the pro stick, which you'll want to do the moment your player reaches the set point of the shot. Tempo is the speed at which you move the pro stick to the opposite side of your original stick throw. The goal is to finish the stick deflection to the opposite side exactly to match the point the ball releases the player's fingertips not the cup of their hand not when their wrist is this far but when the ball actually leaves their fingertips that sound that sounds really really hard but i'll keep reading generally this is going to feel a, feel a little slower slash uh, rhythmic than other double throw mechanics like skill dunks or cross combos especially when more deliberate shooters like Jokic and kyle anderson my best advice is to go into freestyle practice and get a ton of shots up, Play, paying close attention to the shot feedback after each attempt. Trust me, it'll pay off in a much higher shooting percentages if you put it in the time to master rhythm shooting. Now, if I'm being honest with you, like I told you in the beginning of the video, players want to get straight into the game they want to get straight they don't want to lab for six hours putting up shots you know what i'm saying to then make a mob player that their player is going to feel completely different when trying to use some of them same jump shots that they might like from their favorite players and of course everybody knows as soon as the game drops everybody's going to put on t max uh base and try to shoot with t mac and see how it feels but i'm telling you right now to me i feel like rhythm shooting you, you won't need it. You won't need it, especially in a situation where you know that, you, you know, you have to be locked in and stuff like that. And 
with you being locked in, you do not want to be one of those people that, you know, your finger sweating, you're trying to get everything right. And you got to take that last second shot for that rhythm and, and look at the exact point when you really, you're going to break. And I'm going to laugh at you. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to laugh at you. But I do know that there are going to be people out there that are really good at the game and really want to try it out and have no problem maybe taking one of their shots with square and then taking another shot with the rhythm uh shooting uh feature so you know it's completely up to you like i said but i'm gonna tell you right now i believe that that's the other feature that's not really going to be used like that shot meter rhythm shooting it's not going to be used as much as we think it will you know what i mean there's only going to be a percentage of players who actually go crazy with that I, I i trust me trust me now let's talk about the next thing um are there any changes to the passing mechanics of the game there are a number of improvements to the passing overall, but the most noticeable is improved lob pass logic. The targeting on lobs is much better in 2K25 and is really great for advanced passes or leading a receiver to the basket over a trailing defender. Control wise, bounce alley oops are now triggered contextually, and south alleys have been moved to uh, X and circle or A and B. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad. All right. Now let's talk about the next thing. Um, what is the default shot timing profile? Shot timing profile defaults to difficulty based. Now, I believe that difficulty based is completely fine by me. I don't think that I'll really move it. You know what I mean? With the high risk and a, and a low risk. I, I really might not move it. I'll just leave it on difficulty because a lot of my games are going to be online anyway. You know what I mean? I'm going to be in a wreck. I'm, I'm, if the theater returns, I'll be there. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to be at the park for a little bit. So I'm going to be playing online mainly. You know what I'm saying? Maybe 80% of my games will be online anyway. Um, which automatically maps rookie through pro to low, all star to superstar to normal, and Hall of Fame to high. All right. Um, can you still jab step into the standing meter dunk? Now, this right here. I will say it was one of the worst things that I've seen in recent years, simply because that dead zone, man, you get somebody in that dead zone, that standing dunk. Oh my, it's unstoppable, unstoppable, literally unstoppable. But what Mike said is that you can no longer perform jab steps while standing under the basket. You'll get pump fakes now instead. So if you decide to try to jab, you're just going to pump. Now, if I'm being real, Everybody knows if you pump fake, sometimes those pump fake animations create a small jab, not not really noticeable to the point where you can turn your body with the jab. But at the same time, there are animations that might, you know, wall you up with that first pump fake. And then you'll probably have to pump fake out of that wall when a player is just standing up, because we all know if a player is under the basket with his arms up and you pump fake the ball, there's like a a 67 percent chance that his player will go like this for some reason all like the player will have his hands up be looking down on you you pump fake and he'll go like this for a split second it's super weird but it happens in 2k and i think that might be the moment where you'll be able to take advantage of that standing uh dunk so yeah all right um let's talk about the scoops man this one this one broke my heart um, basically the question was, have scoopers been retuned? Basically in NBA 2K24, scoop layups was so OP. Uh, listen, I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and say it now. I became a player that took his dunk off his player just so he could lay up because of scoop layups. Scoop layups were so cheesy. They look so good. So satisfying. Like you, you feel like you killed that player when getting that scoop layup off. But he says scoop, um, quick scoop layups got a small nerf to better balance the risk versus reward of using those type of finishes. So NBA 2K25 scoop layups will probably still be a thing, but they probably won't be as OP as they once were because essentially a scoop layup was so fast and you could finish on either side of the room with that scoop layup that help defense really couldn't even get to you when doing the skip layup. I mean, scoop layup, and when they did get to you, they couldn't even stop you. Like the green, the green bar, just it don't disappear. It don't get smaller. There's no contest, but hopefully in 2K25, like they said, risk versus reward, hopefully that changed up. All right, let's uh, go down to 
Uh, the not. Oh uh, man, another keyword chat. If you watch Dragon Ball Z, you know what over nine thousand means, and you know, you know, you know what that means to your heart when you see a term that say you know over nine thousand. You know what I'm saying? Hit words, keywords. Oh, hold on, over nine thousand. You know what I'm saying? But you know it is what it is. But on the course I report, it says you added over 9,000 animations. Could you tell us more? We've added over 9,000 new pro play animations in 2K25, bringing the total to around 14,600. From the main gameplay categories, there are 1,500 dribble sequences, 1,100 shots, 1,300 motion sequences, 800 rebounds, 1,000 passes, 434 dunks, 550 blocks, and 1,110 layups that are new to NBA 2K25. And there are plenty more in the miscellaneous areas. Chat, that's a lot. I know the keyword is there. If I'm being honest with you, hey, to all of my labbers out there, NBA 2K Lab, I'm talking to you too. Find me the best of everything. Find me the best layup. Find me the best dunk. Find me the best shot. Find me the best top fives, and I'll choose one out of all of them. Because I'm not finna go through over 9,000 animations. I'm not finna do that. Now, if I'm being honest, if defense has the ability to choose their block packages, their steal packages, their rebound packages, and stuff like that within these 9,000 animations, then I'll have a good fucking time. <laughs> I'll have a great time. But on the offensive side, you got me chopped. You got me chopped. I'm not going through all that. Mm -mm. I'm not going through that dossier. I'm not going through that. <laughs> not at all, bro. All right. Um. Next question. Are there any new post moves? There are some new post fades and hooks thanks to pro play. So again, NBA 2K has been doing nothing but scanning game footage. I'm not sure if they've been doing it from the last, you know, inception of, you know, the NBA, the last 10 years, the last 20 years, the last five years. I don't know, like, what they've been scanning, but with all these new animations that are coming into the game, I will say, I want to see more of it because you, when you can get that feel of, like, yo, my player play like, and I get to go on Twitter or, or Instagram or TikTok and watch like the Magic Johnson uh, rec playing Bill videos or, you know what I mean, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, like, you know what I'm saying, Rodman, whomever, like, just watching those type of videos on social media, it, it brings that essence back to me, you know what I mean? It, it gives me, like, a little, little joy, you know what I mean? That's, that's the thing that I like about NBA 2K, being able to watch other people's content that get very super creative with it. I like, I like watching that type of content. All right, next thing. Um, is there any penalty to for playing off ball defense? If I'm being honest with you, this is more of a question for my team players and play now players because nine times out of ten, you know what I'm saying? If you're playing my career, you're never really playing off ball. You know what I'm saying? And when I mean my career, I mean online. All right, but if you're in my career, if you're not a point guard or a shooting guard or a center or something like if you like a, a small forward or a power forward, your guy might not touch the ball. You know what I'm saying? In in, in five or six possessions. But if you're a point guard and you're playing my career like the storyline, then yeah, you're you're gonna be on ball unless you call for the switch. Um, but let's hear the answer. There is no explicit penalty for playing off ball, but there are definite advantages to manually controlling the on ball defender. User controlled defenders get a slight boost to their contest scores compared to AI controlled teammates. Also, users can take advantage of the new defensive cutoff mechanic to get more jam ups and fumbles against the ball handler. AI teammates have um, perception delays, so based on their ratings, they may not be as reactive and give up during lanes more often than a solid user controlled defender would. And what he's meaning by that is. If there's a fast break situation and, you know, you're running back down for defense, nine times out of the 10, the AI is either going to pick an individual run into the lane or they're going to go to the foul line to then decide if they're going to hit the wings or the corners if a pass go there, which will also, you know, within doubt, make them delay, give up a three on a fast break nine times out of 10. But if you're using control and you're running back and you're getting back, you can choose who you want to run to because you have a better chance of once you get to where you're going, the AIs, I guess, 
computer input would say, oh, he's running to the corner for defense. Let me go to the opposite one or let me get the person coming up court with the ball or whatever the case may be. So basically, you know, you want to you want to be there. Um, last thing that Mike Wang answered, and he answered it today at 153. Um, will you need post control attributes to score post fades? You don't need post control for post fades. Post control is more for post moves. Post fade success is driven by your shot ratings, close slash mid and badges. So, yeah. Um, I don't know why that question was there. Um, I mean, I, I made one back to the basket build and, uh, yeah, I, I never really needed post control like that for, for my post feeds and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, maybe, you know, you need that for that. You know what I'm saying? That, <laughs> when you do that move right there, that motherfucker, that, oh, that, oh, I got shook by somebody's shoulder. Oh, you know what I mean? Shit like that, shit like that. Shit. But with that being said, um, that is all the information that we have for now. If you haven't read NBA 2K's Courtside Reporter, you haven't watched the 2K TV interview with Mike Wayne, where they showed off the new, um, I think they call it the 2K Learn. Um, if I'm being honest, um, if you made it to this part of the video, hit the like, whatever, and leave a comment. 2K has been known to have things inside their game, take them out, bring them back, rename them, make them more 2K. So 2K Learn is 2KU. So let's let's just you know what I'm saying we just gonna get that you know what I'm saying oh my god <laughs> light bulb it is 2KU but it's it's a little different obviously um and it has little mini games in it too so you know if you do want to use that go ahead I'm not gonna use it I don't need it I've been playing the game since it came out in NBA 2K so you know I'm I'm good but if you want to learn 2K enjoy man I'm 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 gonna be good now um with that being said as 2K news comes out. There is a roadmap for all of the news that's coming out, as you can see on screen. Um, if you have any questions of, will I be making videos? Will I be talking about this? Will I be keeping it a hundred? Will I be talking about Jersey stitching? You could believe that I'm going to talk about whatever the hell I want to talk about. And if you want to make fun of me, you can make fun of me. Cause I don't care, <laughs> but this is your boy IKC signing out. I appreciate y'all for watching this long video and uh, I'll see y'all next time. Peace. King Kong, King Kong, King Kong, Abba. King Kong, King Kong, King Kong, Abba. King Kong, King Kong.